Hello there, my fellow xenobiologists, and welcome back to another episode of Warhammer 40k lore. Today's episode is gonna be a rare instance where we cover some xenos that aren't exactly fully self-aware, like the main xenos races of the Tau, the Eldar, etc. That's because they're much closer to the animal kingdom than they are to any full 40k faction. Nevertheless, they are an important topic, at least in my opinion, as their existence, at the very least, shaped the Thousand Suns Legion and the Primarch Magnus the Red quite a bit. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the scary bugs with a mouthful of a name known as the Psych Nguyen. Unfortunately, being a rather obscure topic, there are very few pictures on them. My apologies. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Psych Nguyen are creatures of an insectoid nature that resemble huge, spindly wasps. They are also vile warp entities drawn to the mental emanations of the unprotected, badly injured or nascent psychers whose minds they attack for the disgusting purpose of gestating their progeny. The Psych Nguyen have been known to display several subspecies, of which three main ones have been identified. The Mara strain, the Lactose strain, and the long-extinct Prospero strain. Of the known Psych Nguyen subspecies identified by Imperial scholars, the Mara strain is deemed the most dangerous. It was first identified by the Ordo Xenos Inquisitor Ark Ashton during a heavy infestation at a mining penitentiary on the ice world of Mara in the Calyxis sector. Although the facility was subsequently decommissioned, the tale of the Ice Station Massacre remains a favorite dark fable among the sector spacefarers. Since then, confirmed incidents of the Mara strain infection have occurred on the Calyxis worlds of Dusk, Lacrime, and Pellucida 5 as well as several vessels transiting near Mara, although the incidents thankfully remain rare. The Lactose strain, identified in 281 M39 by brother epistolary Arno Tanis of the Death Watch in the Jericho Ridge, seems particularly resistant to extinction, having reappeared a dozen times after seemingly being eradicated. Tannis himself was slain by larval infestation just one day after making his report of a successful mission against them to the Watch Commander, forcing Watch Fortress Eriak into lockdown until the creatures could be contained and destroyed. Another strain of Psych Nguyen is the long-extinct Prospero strain, that resided on the now barren homeworld of the Thousand Suns Legion. The creatures were also insectoid, and utterly repellent to the human eye. Prospero's ancient capital city of Tisca was the very last outpost of human civilization on that world, after its prior society had been wiped out thousands of years before by the predations of the Psyche Nguyen themselves. Tisca was a city where the survivors of a planet-wide cataclysm found refuge from the assault of the Psyche Nguyen. The Thousand Suns always suspected some freak upsurge in the warp triggered an explosion of uncontrolled psychic potential within the Prosperine population, driving the Psyche Nguyen into a reproductive feeding frenzy. The civilization of Prospero collapsed, and the survivors fled to the city in the mountains. For thousands of years, the people of Tisca endured, while all they had built in the millennia since leaving Earth fell to dust. The surface of Prospero was dotted with the remnants of their dead culture. Empty cities were overgrown with forests and vines, the palaces of their kings overrun by wild creatures. The survivors, well, survived by salvaging knowledge and equipment from the destruction to construct techno-psychic arrays and sustainable energy sources, which allowed them in turn to build giant hydroponic gardens deep in the caverns of the Ventral Mountain Range. Ironically, they survived the Psyche Nguyen threat by developing their own psychic powers, which made them so vulnerable in the first place. The Psyche Nguyen were drawn to Tisca in their thousands, but the survivors were able to train their most gifted psychers to use their minds to erect invisible barriers of pure thought, later known as Kine Shields. They were a primitive, bombastic kind of power, compared to the subtle arts later employed by the Thousand Suns, but they did succeed in keeping the creatures at bay. 
Even so, the practitioners of the mysteries remained locked in their limited understanding of the Immaterium's power until the coming of the Thousand Suns Primarch Magnus the Red. A year after his coming to Prospero, the Primarch walked away from the gates of Tisca and marched into the wilderness for nearly 40 days. Through many observations, Magnus learned to harness his own powerful abilities during the long trek. He also met Amon, the future captain of the Ninth Fellowship. Despite their discoveries, as was the way of history, nothing of import was ever achieved without any bloodshed. Tragedy soon struck Tiska in the form of the return of the Psychnewin menace. Temporarily lax in their discipline, the Psychnewin were once again drawn to the large commune of psychers in Tiska in their thousands blackening the sky with their numbers as they descended like a plague from ancient days. They swarmed from the darkened caves, organically shifting clouds of deadly clades, the relenting buzzing of thousands of crystalline wings representing the sound of inevitable doom. The males swarmed around, a hurricane of snapping mandibles and tearing claws, and fifty men died in the time it takes to draw breath. Behind the males came the females, engorged with clutch upon clutch of immaterial eggs. Their furious reproductive hunger was insatiable, and dozens of the Primarch's friends fell to their knees in horror as they felt the Psychnewin eggs take root in their brain. The beasts swirled around them, battering the Prosperines with psychic thrusts, scrabbing at their mental barriers to seed their minds with their eggs, and only the strongest of them remained. Amon and eight of the masters of Tesca stood along the Primarch, and as the Psyche knew and attacked again, Magnus knew this was when he would see a true test of his abilities. He would finally discover what limits he had, if any. As the Psyche knew and came at the Prospering Defenders once again, something magnificent happened. The Primarch felt something move inside him, feeling changed as though an immense power that had laid inside him, dormant and untapped, suddenly surged into life. As Magnus was contemplating the moment of his death, raging fires erupted from his hands. The Primarch hurled torrents of flame into the sky, as though he had always known he had such power, and smote hundreds upon hundreds of the Psychnewin to ruin with every gesture. Soon, the other Tiska masters displayed similar abilities as well, as walls of flame sprung up at their command. Others too were able to pluck beasts from the air and dash them on the rocks with the power of their mind. Still more defenders were able to will the vital fluids within the Psychnewin to boil within their skeletons. Amon saw images of the future and imminent danger seared through his mind, and he cried words of warning to his fellows, telling them of the dangers to come and how they might avoid them. Some of the other defenders sensed the lust within the Psychnewin to plant their own psychic seed within the human minds, the relentless animal hunger that drove them to feed and propagate. They reached into the minds of the creatures and twisted their perceptions so that they became blind to the humans. With all these newfound abilities, the later psychic cults of the Thousand Suns were born. The threat of the Prospero strain of the Psychnewin was forever afterwards rendered inert. The Psychnewin are foul but powerful psychic creatures that normally reside in the Immaterium. These insectoids have played humanity since at least the Age of Strife, when there was an explosion of psychic ability among the various populations of humanity across the galaxy. What makes this creature so dangerous is its reproductive cycle. The female Psychnewin is drawn to the psychic emanations in real space and has a rudimentary fusion of telepathic and telekinetic power. When fertile, the female basically teleports a clutch of its eggs into the brain of a psychically active host being with an unprotected mind, vulnerable to the power of the ether. These eggs are tiny, no bigger than a grain of sand, but by morning the next day, they will hatch and begin to feed on the brain of the host. At first, the victim will feel nothing more than a mild headache, but by afternoon he will be in agony, raving and insane, as the brain is devoured from the inside out. By nightfall, he is gonna be dead, his skull a writhing mass of plump maggots. In the space of a few hours, the grubs will have picked the carcass clean, and will then seek a dark place to hide in which to pupate. By the following day, they will emerge as adults, ready to hunt and reproduce. 
Once infected by a psychedelic, a psyker slowly loses intelligence, and his or her appearance will slowly change, until they are either killed by the emerging psychedelic larvae, or their instability unleashes other psychic perils, such as insanity or even demonic possession. The psychedelic of all strains have three well-known phases of their life cycle. The larval phase, the adult phase, and the infected phase. The larval psychedelic are typically puny creatures, whose main power is the ability to infect others. Injuries can trigger a sudden metamorphosis to an adult form though. Their relatively small size makes them easy to kill, but they usually occur in large numbers making an infestation of psychnewin difficult to control, especially if there are any latent psychers around for them to infect. Once in adult form, the psychnewin are relatively easy to destroy, having no compulsion to hide anymore. However, they are dangerous because they are capable of breeding more of their kind within the minds of unprotected psychers. On the other hand, over a short distance of up to 100 meters, all the psychers are vulnerable, whether protected or not. The adult psychnewin is vividly colored in yellow and black, its wings are transparent. Grubs are white and generally maggot-like in appearance, though the psychnewin of the Mara strain are said to resemble spiny grubs. The adult psychnewins are much more dangerous than their larval brethren. They are stronger, faster, tougher, more perceptive than humans, and capable of flight, of turning insubstantial, and detecting mines. A single adult is a significant threat to almost any living creature nearby. There's also three main forms of the psychnewin. The psychnewin grubs are typically between 0.5 and 1 meters long, and ooze a grayish mucus as they crawl. They are unsettling to behold, as if their motions are out of sync with the reality they are spawned into, and very few beings can stomach their presence for long. Clutches of psychnewin grubs are more inclined to hide in a dark corner, safe from aggressors. It takes relatively little time for grubs to mature into full-grown psychnewin, but they are very vulnerable to aggressors until that time. Making up the majority of the adult psychnewin, the drones resemble the most a giant wasp, each up to 2 meters in length from their mandibles to the end of the thorax. Capable of swift movement and extremely strong and resilient, they are also innately psychic and venomous. Their stingers can pierce any armor made by man or demon, and in significant numbers they can overwhelm even the mightiest of warriors. Within the confines of a space hulk, swarms of psychnewin drones cluster in vast caverns and abandoned vaults, emerging to hunt periodically. The sound of their droning flight has been known to infect the minds of men and drive them to madness, and it is this sound that most often heralds their hunting swarms. And finally, the psych new in Queen. Very rare, it is posited by the Magos biologists of the Death Watch that the psych new in breed, which they have titled Queen, requires special attention and conditions to create. The special circumstances that are necessary for a grub to become a queen instead of a drone have never been replicated. However, those rare few that have been encountered were sighted aboard the space hulk Mortis Thule. The creatures are very dangerous, not only for their huge size and ferocious manner, but also their ability to spread their vile brood among the stars. Large, bloated, psychic, and extremely strong and resilient, a psych new in queen is a deadly enemy, the kind of creature that only the mightiest of champions can ever hope to best in combat. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the fearsome and dangerous insectoids known as the psych new in for today. If you ever read the Horus Heresy novel Thousand Sons by Graham McNeil, that's probably the first and best place where you could see what these monsters are all about. Nevertheless, they are scary and they are disgusting, and I'd rather face almost any Tyranid creature instead of this thing. Were you aware of the Psychnewin? Do you know of any other bits of lore on them? Feel free to share your thoughts and opinions in the comments below as usual. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. 
Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor protects.